everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be one massive update video for most of the reviews that I've done since the new year. I decided to only stick with makeup for now because I do have some skincare items that I've tested out and I thought I would do a separate update video on those. Before I dive into all of my updates, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos and also don't be afraid to give this video a big thumbs up. I know 80% of you out there watch my videos and don't subscribe so for those people who fall into that category please hit the subscribe button I mean clearly you're enjoying the content join the family I'd welcome you with open arms and for the other 20% who are subscribed and watch my content I love you family the first product I'm going to talk about is from Anastasia Beverly Hills it is the prism palette I did a review on this I don't think it was that long ago but I love the palette still love the palette it's not one that I use on a regular basis though so this isn't the kind of palette that I sort of turn to before I go to work in the morning but I definitely keep it on my vanity because I love to play with it on weekends next up is this palette from NARS this is the danger control palette that had these really nice iridescent colors since the review I think I played with this palette maybe a handful of times and it's kind of sat in my drawer so I'm gonna have to say this is probably a pass for me I may end up donating it it's just not something that I reach for anymore but don't get me wrong the formula is still lovely the colors are still gorgeous it's just not something that I reach for on a regular basis moving right along to ColourPop this is the Dream Street palette from Kathleen lights I do love all of the colors in here I do reach for this palette especially for these beautiful neutral tone colors over over here it is something that sits top shelf for me right now so this one is still good to go for me I also have my dose of colors palettes the one in blushing berries as well as sassy sienna's these beautiful sort of coral brown colors I still truly love these palettes and every chance I get I do use them next is the burgundy bar palette from Maybelline this is another one that I really recently reviewed I think only in the last couple of weeks and I still love it these colors are stunning I love using these beautiful neutral tones up here the most this gold color for me is everything I love how easy it is to pair with almost any eyeshadow and it's day appropriate and I can also turn it into a night appropriate wear as well next I have the Katy Perry hot cat palette I reviewed this fell in love with it I think it is absolutely stunning I still love these colors I reach for it regularly and I love the formula so much so that it finally went on sale for I think seven or so dollars so I went back to Shoppers Drug Mart and I picked up the other palette this is in the shade cool cat so you have some really nice unique tones in here I love this color here especially it has this beautiful sort of teal area iridescence but it's still a nice and dark and then this purple up here oh my goodness check this out it's got the perfect amount of purple and glitter in it absolutely stunning love 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 these palettes and they're still top shelf next I'm going to move to primers and then right into foundations after that I feel that's sort of a natural progression the first primer I'm going to talk about is this one here from Essence this is the fresh and fit awake primer it's got a healthy glow and a pore minimizing effect I call bullshit on this I am just going to literally chuck this in the trash I don't even want to donate it to anybody else because I don't want them to experience the trauma I experienced while using that primer. I did put it to the test several times after I did my review and it just did something really weird to my foundation. It made it slip around a little bit too much. It didn't really give me a nice sort of glow to my skin. It wasn't easy for me to work with and I feel like it accentuated my pores and not minimize them. So for all of those reasons, I am tossing it aside. If you have dry or normal skin and and you have this primer let me know what your thoughts are on it and if it works a little bit better for you the next primer I didn't actually do a full review video on I think I only hauled it in my what's new at the drugstore video and it is from physicians formula this is the rose all day oil-free serum it's supposed to brighten and tighten 
and I actually like this. I've been wearing this serum for the last, I'd say two weeks, a little more consistently underneath my foundation, and I love the beautiful glow that it gives my skin. I even go so far as to wear this completely on its own, and I still really appreciate the way my skin glows in the sunlight. As for the claim about tightness, I think it does tighten your skin initially. So for the first couple of hours, you are going to feel a really nice smoothness and sort of tightness to your skin. But after that, it sort of fades away and it just goes back to what your skin normally looks like. So not a big game changer there, but this is definitely a serum that I'm going to continue using. As part of primers, I'm going to talk about this color correcting liquid concealer from Essence. I still don't like this. I've tried using it a number of times and I just find the consistency to be a little too watery. It doesn't really end up looking green. I don't feel like it masks any redness at all. And the minute you begin blending it in, it just completely goes away. So for me, I wanna say garbage but maybe someone else wants to try it out and maybe get some use out of it. I don't know. Jumping into foundations next, I've got the two foundations from Essence. These are the Fresh and Fit Awake Makeup Healthy Glow foundations with some sort of vitamin complex and cranberry water. I did use these a couple of other times and I still didn't like the way my skin looked. It transferred a lot. It didn't really give me great coverage. It's just not for me. Aside from this foundation not working for me, I also don't appreciate that it only comes in four shades. I have two of the four and I had to mix these in order to get my color so I can only imagine how few people are actually able to give these foundations a try. I don't recommend them and I really hope Essence does something about that shade range. Next up is my Vula Beauty The Serum Foundation and I am still in love with this foundation. I have mixed it in with a couple of other foundations today and it is what I'm wearing on my face. I love wearing this on its own. It just leaves my skin looking like a beautiful blank poreless canvas. I am in love. It is a little bit expensive, but a little bit of foundation also goes a long way. I also have my Rimmel Lasting Finish 25 Hour Breathable Foundation. This is a reformulation, I think, of an older Rimmel foundation that used to exist. I did do a review on this. I thought it was hilarious that it comes with a massive doe foot applicator, but I still like this foundation. Um, do I reach for it on a regular basis? Truthfully, no. There are other foundations that I turn to first, but this is something that I do pull out every now and again. So I am still hanging on to this and I still like it. Next up is the Dior Skin Forever Undercover Foundation and I am obsessed with this. I didn't think I would like this as much as the original formula, but it is definitely still a baby of mine. I wear this almost every single day if I'm not playing with other foundations. It's just fantastic. I did mix this one with the Vula Beauty and my Fiona Styles Matte Foundation Concentrate, and that is what is on my face right now. You cannot go wrong with this. I am so, so impressed, and it remains top shelf. And as an update for everybody, I was in Sephora earlier today and I bumped into a Dior specialist makeup artist and I did ask him about the Dior Skin Forever Perfect Foundation and whether or not it was being discontinued and he said no, it is not. It is still something that they are going to be carrying, but they are in such low supply right now around the world and what they're working on is just creating more of this formula, but it is not going anywhere. Instead, the company is just focusing on their long of this foundation right now, but this is not going anywhere. That is key. And lastly, I have the Physicians of Formula. This is the Healthy Foundation with a Brightening Complex. It's good for all skin types. I still use this on a regular basis. I love the coverage that it gives me. I love that it leaves my skin looking like skin. I've never had an issue with this clinging on to any dry patches. It still looks wonderful. I like it so much that I saw it on sale at Loblaws the other day, so I picked up a backup and that's gonna go in my drawers for now, but this is definitely staying top shelf. Moving right along to concealers. I've got this palette here from Essence. This is the Strobing and Contour Palette, and as you can see, it remains untouched. I have not touched this since my review of it, and 
I can't say that I'm upset about that. You guys know I definitely prefer powder contours more than I do a cream contour, so this is just something that has been sitting in my drawer and I will likely end up donating to someone who is gonna get some more use out of it than I am. Do you guys also remember this concealer here? This is another one from Essence. It's the Camouflage Full Coverage Concealer. Unfortunately, this one just doesn't sit well on my skin. It doesn't cover up the redness that I have on my cheeks over here. It's not a concealer that I reach for regularly anymore. It's gathering dust on my vanity. So this one is definitely going to be donated to somebody else. Let's move right along to powders. Do you guys remember this one here from my Essence review? It is the Color Correcting Mattifying Powder. And this is one that I felt did absolutely nothing for my skin. It didn't cover up any redness. It didn't keep me any more matte. I just felt like it added weight on top of my foundation and just made me look really cakey. So it isn't something that I have used again repeatedly. I am gonna be donating. Next Next up is one of my favorite setting powders from Rimmel. This is the Stay Matte Mattifying Loose Powder. I didn't think I was gonna love this as much as I do, but holy cow, I use this almost every single day if I'm not using my Cinema Secrets powder. It is phenomenal. I do have it all over my face as well as underneath my eyes today. I love that it's got a bit of a beige tone to it so it doesn't go on completely stark white so there isn't much flashback. There's just a little bit with this, which is why I normally go over it with my MAC Studio Fix powder. I just quickly powder on top of it and that eliminates any flashback, period. This is something that actually keeps my face looking matte all day long. It also gives my skin a beautiful, smooth feel to it, completely masks all of my pores. You can't see anything on my skin when I use this. I am such a big fan. I'm definitely going to buy Buy some backups because I will be heartbroken if I ever cannot find this powder. I did a dupe video on this I think maybe a month back now maybe a little bit less I can't quite remember but it was for this product right here it was duping the cup brow from Benefit this is the CoverGirl Easy Breezy Brow Pomade pomade, pomade, I don't know how you say it, but whatever, it's this brow shit. I still love it. Even though the color is still a little bit too dark for me, I gotta find a lighter shade. I am wearing it on my eyebrows today. I love how easy it is to apply. It's a really nice, smooth formula, doesn't budge can't complain with this. I forgot to mention my cream shadows from Essence. These are the Metal Shock shadows. I am still obsessed with these. I love the way they look on the eyes. They have not disappointed me. They aren't something that I reach for on a regular basis though. Um, these colors are definitely beautiful, but they're not always work appropriate, or at least I don't think they are. So I don't wear them to work, which is where I normally wear most of my makeup. Um, instead, I keep these for special occasions. So if I know I'm going out and I want to do more of a party look, these are the eyeshadows that I'm going to pull out. I still love these and they will remain top shelf for me. Next up are my two eyeliners from JCat Beauty. These are the Rock and Glitz Diamond Dazzle Liquid Liners. These are what I call a dupe for the Tom Ford Eye Defining Pen. I still love them, still use them on a regular basis. They remain top shelf. Moving along to lips, I have these liquid lipsticks from Essence. These are the Metal Shock Lip Paints. Um, I have two from the Metal Shock line and actually one from the Vibrant Shock line. And this one here, I still really, really like. It's a beautiful bright red color. You can't go wrong with it. That's gonna still stay in my collection. This color over here though, this is called Mercury. It's just a little too nude for me. I feel like it makes me look sick even if I wear a darker sort of lip liner underneath it. So I am going to be donating this one. And then I've got Hemlock, which is this purple lipstick right here. And you can see it on my hand. This is the one that I wore that was a little bit outside of my comfort zone. It wasn't exactly something that I would wear on a regular basis, but it's still beautiful. And I think I'm going to hang on to it because I'm going to try and wear 
wear this a little bit over the summertime and if I find that I'm not reaching for it then I'm probably just gonna donate it to a friend. I also really quickly want to mention my ColourPop Luxe lipsticks. I am still obsessed with these. I love 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 these colors. They are so creamy, very wearable. They last a lot longer than I thought they would. I reach for them regularly and they remain top shelf for me. I think they were still a fantastic investment. If you can get your hands on them, I highly recommend them. And lastly, I have these three stunning lipsticks from Annabelle Cosmetics. They are the collaboration between Annabelle and Haley L. Sicer, who is a Toronto-based designer. She created these stunning shades and this beautiful packaging. I still absolutely love these colors. I use them on a regular basis, especially Banana Yana and Bugging Out Plums. Oh my goodness, these colors I just, I can't get enough of. And not gonna lie, I have gone out and bought backups. Woohoo! We did it! There are all of my updates for these products. I really hope you enjoyed this type of video. I know I do a lot of first impressions and I don't often do follow-ups for a lot of products, so I'm gonna try and incorporate a lot more of these videos into the mix so you guys know whether or not I'm still using what I reviewed or if I'm now thinking about donating some of these items to a better home than mine. As always, let me know in the comment section what you guys think of some of these products. If you disagree with me, that's perfectly okay. Or if you completely agree with me on some of these products, or maybe you're meeting me halfway, who knows. But I always love reading your comments and listening to your thoughts and opinions. Thank you again so much for watching this video. I really hope you take a quick moment to subscribe if you aren't already and also give this video a big thumbs up. Also, connect with me on my social media. I am on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Snapchat, and I'm going to link everything for you in the description box below. I hope you are all having an amazing day, no matter where you are in the world. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!